All right, today we are continuing domain and range. We are looking at two different notations today, uh, inequality and then set notation. So our inequality notations correspond to our graph, or if we're given interval notation, we can even rewrite it as an inequality. So if we've got an open circle or parentheses, we are gonna be using our less than or greater than symbols. And if we have closed circles or brackets, we're gonna be using our less than or equal to or are greater than or equal to symbols. And if we're excluding just a single value, we're gonna use the does not equal instead of having two separate intervals that we have with the union symbol between them. So it's kind of like a shorthand version. So let's jump into these quick examples. We're given the interval notation, so let's graph them and then write the inequality. So I've got bracket negative three to five parentheses, which means I'm gonna have a closed circle at negative three, an open circle at positive five, and then a line connecting them. So if I'm talking about all of those values between them, I'm gonna have what's called a compound inequality. So my variable, we'll just use X for now, goes in the middle. Negative three and five are my two boundary points. So now I have to figure out what symbol I use in between these values. Closed circle at negative three, so I'm gonna do the less than or equal to, and then it's an open circle at five, so it just gets the less than symbol. All right, let's do another one. B from two with a parenthesis, so that's gonna be an open circle off to positive infinity. So that means all values greater than two. So X is greater than two. When you have infinity as part of your um, inequality, you don't have that, you don't use infinity as part of your inequality. If that's part of your domain, your range, your set, when you're writing it as an inequality, we just have one piece of the inequality. We don't also say that it's between infinity. We just say X is greater than two. All right, negative infinity to four. So that is gonna be an open circle going off to the left, all of our negative numbers. So that means that X is going to be less than four. On to D, parentheses one to four bracket. That means I'm gonna have an open circle at one, a closed circle at four, a line connecting them. So again, I'm gonna have a compound inequality here, one, X, and four. Because it's an open circle on the one, it's just gonna be a less than. And because it's a closed circle on the four, it's gonna be a less than or equal to. All right, negative two to two, both with brackets on E. So two closed circles, a line connecting them. So negative two, X positive two, they both get the less than or equal to because we have a closed set with closed circles and brackets. All right, F, negative infinity to positive infinity. So all of our real numbers. So just like on two, excuse me, B and C, we didn't include infinity in our inequality. The same is here. If you've got all the numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers, you can either write out all real numbers or you can use this symbol, which is like an R with a double, um, double line at the front, double vertical line. That means all real numbers. All right, and then last one, seven bracket off to positive infinity. That means that X is gonna be greater than or equal to seven. All right, let's keep practicing this inequality notation with some graphs. We're gonna be stating the domain and the range in inequality notation. So starting here with graph one, my domain is my X values, and it's going off to infinity in both directions, so that's gonna be all real numbers. And then my range, this graph is bouncing back and forth from negative three to positive three in my Y's. So my range is gonna be negative three to positive three, and we put Y in the middle because we're talking about our Y values. And these both get the less than or equal to because we don't have any breaks, holes, or jumps in the graph. It's all included. All right, let's look at two, our domain, um, our X value. So this graph is continuous, except that we have a hole right here at that X value of zero. So our graph is gonna include all values smaller than zero and bigger than zero, but not zero. So the way we represent that is just by saying X does not equal zero. 
So instead of having two separate intervals like we would for interval notation, for our inequality notation, all we have to say is x is not 0. Now let's look at our range. Again, we have that hole here at that y value being 2, and then it goes off to infinity positively. So our range is going to be that y is greater than 2. And because it's an open circle, we're not underlining that inequality symbol. All right, number three, our domain. This is stretching off to infinity in both directions. So our domain, again, is all real numbers. And then our range, it stays at 5 for the entire graph. So the range is just that y equals 5. And we put that inside of a squiggly bracket. y is 5 everywhere. Okay. So that is inequality notation. Now let's talk about set notation. So again, interval notation, quick refresher. For this graph, that would be brackets, obviously, because I've got closed circle. So from negative 6 to 8, and then our inequality, again, x in the middle, it's all closed circles, negative 6 to positive 8. And I got ahead of myself on the back of that last one. We don't need brackets on the, the 5 for that range. It's just 5. No brackets. I got ahead of myself thinking about set notation. So just take off those brackets. It's just y equals 5, and only 5 for the entire um, Okay, so we refreshed. This is our graph. That's interval. That's inequality. Inequality. So what do we do if we can't use interval or inequality notation? What it's saying here is on my number line, I have all of these values in between those two. But if I just had one or two dots on my number line and not the numbers in between, how do I represent that? We do what's called set notation or set builder notation, which is where we have our squiggly brackets. And you can read through those. Um, but we're saying our x or y values such that this is the case. So let's look at some graphs where we can't use interval or inequality notation, such as these two right here. So all I've got are a couple different coordinate points on my graph. So my domain, I'm just going to list the x values separated by commas inside of my squiggly brackets. So looking here, I've got values at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. But not all of the little, like 1.5, 1.9, not the values in between, just at those values in particular. So we're just going to list those separated by a comma. Sorry if that gets kind of tight and small. Just those values separated by a comma inside of your squiggly brackets. Then we do the same thing for our y values for our range. We're just going to look at, okay, we've got negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm just going to, again, separate those with a parentheses inside my squiggly brackets. Okay, let's practice this again on our second graph. My x values, I've got negative 2, 0, 1, and 3. And for my y values, I have negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. Now, I want to take this one step further. This graph on the right, think about it in your head before I give it away. Is this a function? So if you thought about your vertical line test, if I draw a vertical line here along the y-axis, notice how it touches two points. So this is not a function. But the one on the left could be because it would pass the vertical line test. So just taking that a step further, still thinking about functions. So set notation is great for when we can't use interval or inequality notation. But we can also use set notation to represent the same interval or inequality notation. So let's look at this example. I've got my graph. So an interval notation, this would be bracket negative 5 to 1 parentheses. And the inequality would be 5 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. So I've represented this set in interval and inequality notation. Now let's write it in set notation. So following these, you're putting it inside your inequality in your squiggly brackets. So for this one, we'd be saying x such that, that's what that colon means, x is between negative 5 and positive 1, squiggly brackets. Okay, So we can also write interval and inequality notation in set notation. 
All right, and that wraps up our day two notes on domain and range. And so now you should be able to represent domain and range in all three notations, interval, inequality, and set notation.